Hello friends, this video on electrochemistry part 34 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. One kind of part we will learn is the fuel cell. Let's first understand the concept behind the fuel cell. So if you see the production of electricity, generally if we do now also, mostly I think 70% of the electricity generation is done by thermal power plant, by uh, burning coal. That is not efficient way to produce electricity. But still it is a major source of electricity, right? So there if you see the chemical energy is converted to heat energy, then heat energy is, is used to heat water and then it creates high pressure steam and then it, it runs some turbine and then the dynamo attach and then dynamo creates electricity, right? So there is no direct way of converting chemical to electrical energy, chemical to heat, heat to mechanical, mechanical to electrical, correct? So that is not efficient also, plus that is full of pollution. It, it emits a lot of polluting gases, which is not good for health. So if you're looking for a go green earth where you want a, a better earth with less pollution, we should go for fuel cell, right? So the galvanic cell that are designed to convert the energy of combustion of fuel, hydrogen, methane, etc. directly to chemical energy. They are called fuel cell. So fuel cell are nothing but they are also galvanic cell because in galvanic cell, what we do? Don't think galvanic cell is something which is created by galvan. It is just in his honor we have given this name galvanic cell. So galvanic cell is any cell that converts chemical energy to electrical energy directly. Directly. Right? So in this case, chemical energy of hydrogen, methane, etc. is used, and this kind of cell is called fuel cell. Right. Let's see one combustion reaction of uh, water and right? hydrogen. So if you see water, how it reacts, water reacts with oxygen to prepare water. So hydrogen reacts with oxygen to form water. And this is a spontaneous reaction. Delta G is less than zero. Spontaneous reaction. So you keep hydrogen and oxygen nearby, it will form water and it will generate it some heat energy also, right? And here if you see the beauty of this is that for this reaction there is a transfer of electron. So if you see internally what happened is hydrogen actually will lose electron or becomes H plus and gives two electron. Right? That is how happens. Hydrogen becomes H plus. Correct. Oxygen also, if you see, you take half oxygen, it uh, takes two electron and becomes O2 minus. And this H plus and O2 minus react to form water. Correct. So if you see, there was hydrogen here, there is one hydrogen here, they both gave two electrons. What will happen? They become H plus and they become H plus. Right? Two H plus we have got. Similarly, I had this uh, oxygen here. It took, it, it, they gave this. And this is used by this oxygen, right? Half of oxygen I'm taking, let's suppose, to, to form O2 minus. Now, if you see this, let me check. Now, if you see this hydrogen this hydrogen and this oxygen combined and they form water. But if you see internally there was a transfer of electrons from hydrogen to oxygen and they formed bond, right? You must have seen this reaction. So for hydrogen and oxygen, they react to form water and there's a transfer of electron. But this is an internal transfer of electron. It is of no use to us, correct? If somehow we can force this transfer of electron to happen externally, then we can create energy. For example, let's separate this. So we have a hydrogen here, which gives H plus an electron. Hydrogen gives H plus an electron. And we have oxygen, right? Which has become, let's suppose, yeah. This is in need of electron, oxygen. Somehow, we allow H plus to come here 
but oxygen if you want we ask oxygen to come through this electron if you force electron to come through a circuit we can produce current because current is nothing but flow of electrons this if we attach a bulb here bulb will glow so in this chamber let's suppose we put hydrogen here and hydrogen breaks into h plus and electrons there are electrons here we pass we somehow allow only hydrogen to pass through here we have oxygen waiting and electron we allow to pass through some circuit then we can produce current correct so here there has to be some barrier which will allow only h plus ions and not electron neither hydrogen gas to pass through that is difficult task right because they are the very small level the size of electrons and size of hydrogen size of electrons and size of hydrogen gas is very very small but there has to be something if you want to generate electricity from this source because if you can somehow just allow hydrogen to pass through in there but we don't pass allow electron to pass through then the electron will obviously come from this path somehow to meet this oxygen because this hydrogen and oxygen they are dying to meet hydrogen wants to meet oxygen let's suppose this is the goal hydrogen has hydrogen wants to meet oxygen anyhow right but there is a barrier and hydrogen is not allowed now what hydrogen thought is if hydrogen can actually break itself into h plus an electron then it can pass through how if you see if this barrier is only allowing h plus ions then hydrogen will say okay let me break into two parts and let me at least go as h plus ions and the electron will come from some other circuit okay it is like you are going you are want to pass through this place but you have a huge baggage with you and you are not allowed to go through the huge baggage so what you will do you will keep your baggage here and you will go in this path and your bag will come from some other path but at least by the time you come here you will have your bag and the i mean you you will be there and your bag will also be there so assumes electron as a bag if you are with with the bag you are not allowed to pass right but if you just remove your bag that is bag is the electron you are allowed to pass and the bag will come to some other path somebody will take it and bring your bag right and this flow of electron will produce electricity so now what this was observed was the size of hydrogen if you see the radius of hydrogen is nothing but 5 1 2 3 4 into 10 to the power minus 15 meter that is the size of hydrogen it looks very small actually it's to the power minus 15 we talk about the size of hydrogen ions it is 0.8 into 10 to the power minus 15 meter we talk about the electrons the size is 2 into 10 to the power minus 15 meter so what for now since everything is in 10 to the power minus 15 meter just ignore these values right because everything is in 10 to the power minus 15 meter now if you see hydrogen is almost 5 lakh times bigger than hydrogen ions and even electrons is little bit bigger than hydrogen ion it's a big mystery right if you see these two if you combine hydrogen electron it becomes such a big thing and that's what you have seen in the atomic model because the whole thing is filled with empty space it's all empty space there so if you can break this hydrogen into hydrogen ions and electrons the size decrease a lot from 50000 it became almost 1 plus 2 3 from 50000 units it became 3 units huge difference in size now if you can create some holes here like uh, the membrane which we have seen right or a net which is uh, of this much size let me this of 1 into 10 to the power minus 15 meter size that means that will allow h plus but that will not allow electron because from a hole of point uh, from a hole of 1 into 10 to the power minus 5 meter uh, radius size you the electron will not pass because the electron size is 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 meter that radius correct so at this level if you can create a membrane which is of almost this range the radius of the holes in that membrane is of this range 1 into 10 to the power minus 15 meter actually then 
the hydrogen plus will be able to pass through electrons will not be able to pass through hydrogen gas gas no chance at all right and here we can create some catalyst which can help them to break maybe a platinum catalyst because hydrogen will not break into h plus and e minus so easily so we'll create some catalyst and we'll help them to you know, break themselves into h plus and e minus ions and then since this membrane which we are creating will be allowing to pass electrons through sorry hydrogen through hydrogen will pass through electrons will take this route to come and the current will flow let's see uh, the example of a fuel cell now so let's see the construction of this so this is my anode this whole thing is my anode actually this is my uh, platinum catalyst this is my anode with a negative charge and this is a cathode with a positive charge here i am filling some electrolytes this has some electrolytes let me mark this in dots 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 they are my electrolytes and these electrolytes will allow the movement of charge because from here we will see that h plus will move it will allow h plus to move right there will be some catalyst the brown one is a catalyst and this is a platinum catalyst so this plat catalyst will be used to convert h plus h2 to h plus ions as i told there has to be someone who will help them to decrease the size hydrogen gas atom will be converted into h plus ions and electrons correct also i told there will be some membrane the green one is my uh, proton exchange membrane we call is a semi permeable membrane and it's made made from ionomers right and they are designed to conduct h plus they are designed to conduct h plus they will only allow h plus as i told h plus is very small size they will allow h plus and they will block electron hydrogen gas all these things they block correct even oxygen even because it's a very small size right h plus is a very small size 10 to the power minus 15 meter so these holes are very small and they'll allow h plus only right so if you see this proton exchange membrane they use fluoropolymer nephron actually that is used to create a proton exchange membrane we will not discuss more into this just understand they are very very uh, minute holes in this that allows only h plus ions we are dealing at that level 10 to the power minus 5 meter level right now if you see the hydrogen and the oxygen gas are bubbled through if you see my hair my hydrogen gas and oxygen gas here my hydrogen gas is bubbled through here is my hydrogen gas that is bubbled through in this and from here my oxygen gas is bubbled so if you see hydrogen gas goes and hits this catalyst so we see once again hydrogen gas came and there is a fuel my fuel is my hydrogen here if you see this hydrogen gas came and it has hit this platinum catalyst now some of these hydrogen gas will be broken into h plus ions and e minus electrons correct hope you understand it's because this platinum catalyst will help it to break so this will break into h plus and e minus ion now if i have told you this this uh, proton exchange membrane will only allow h plus ions it will not allow e minus ion to go so h plus ions will pass through this and this electrolyte as i told is something which allows h plus ions to go through any positive ions will go through that is my electrolyte so this h plus ions will go from here it will reach this position why to reach this position i will explain you that part also right because the electron went from here to here and there is more electron here so they want to meet this electron back so they will come there correct and now this send this electron it can come till this point but it won't be able to cross this green membrane so what this will do this electron will take this circuit path and come here so when it crosses this part the bulb glows see once again it crosses this circuit right the bulb will glow and that's what electricity is now we have h plus and e minus ion back that means now what will happen is the oxygen is bubbled from here now if you see there is oxygen there is h plus h plus and e minus they are all combined to form water 
right and the water will drain out correct let me repeat once again this is fuel is my hydrogen is a fuel it is it comes here some of the hydrogen breaks this is the the red one is my platinum catalyst it helps to break into h plus and e minus ion and whatever is not broken it goes back from this excess fuel path and this membrane green membrane will allow hydrogen to pass it will pass it come here this green membrane will block electron to pass so this electron will cross this path and when it cross this path it will produce electricity here and now we have h plus ions e minus ions here the oxygen the air is bubbled here and now they all combine to form water and the water is out that is the logic behind the fuel cell correct its efficiency is 70 percent if you talk about the thermal power plant efficiency is almost 40 percent it is pollution free so go green it's a very very good way actually so if you see the reactions let me write so at cathode is my reduction right so if you see the cathode this is my cathode side so here i had oxygen oxygen it reacted with the uh, electrons so let me add some water because water is here anyway it reacted with some electrons and it forms 4oh minus ion anode if you see oxidation happened hydrogen broke into h plus ion we have shown so we take hydrogen we will take so oh minus it forms for water and h for electron correct so overall reaction is hydrogen plus water is equal to h2 okay thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos Attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.